And with your opening statement. Well, certainly excited to be here today. What a great turnout for Big Ten Media Days. Of course, slightly biased. It's a great city to have it in right here in Minneapolis. In looking at last year's Big Ten tournament from the women's side, what a great atmosphere that was here. And so certainly pleased that we have a chance to continue playing here for at least another season. And hopefully that continues into the future. Uh, certainly with our team, we're really excited. As I was just walking in the back of the Target Center, I saw a sign that said, hard hats available upon request. I think that's what our team is at this point in time. And we have 14 young ladies, 10 of them are freshmen or sophomores, but in all reality, all of us are really freshmen this year because we're all learning a new system. With that being said, our energy has been incredible. Our ability to learn has been very high. A lot of people ask, what is our goal? in year one, and our goal is to learn to compete for long stretches and to compete throughout not only each game, but each series of games to continue to get better. You know, it sounds a lot like coach speak, but that's really who we are at this point in time. We are learning in each time, and this is what we have to keep reminding our players, we, as we acquire new knowledge and new skill, and we become good at that skill, then it's time to change to the next thing that we have to learn and we have to get better at. So we're not at a stage where we feel great because we're always learning new things. But again, the good news is we have a, a group of young ladies who, are, who care a great deal, they care for each other a great deal, and they are working their tails off at this point in time. Uh, Michael McClary, the Wisconsin State Journal. Um, you, you're no stranger to the NCAA tournament the last couple of years, obviously, uh, you know, with quite a bit of rebuilding to do with this program. I mean, what do you feel like uh, a successful year would look like building towards that goal? Well, again, I think ultimately for us, it's, it's a matter of learning how to really be competitive in all settings. And when you go back and you watch our games from last year at Minnesota, we competed in, in stretches of games and a lot of times during long stretches of games. And then there was a situation that maybe we change how we how we do something that can help us become a little bit more resilient. So getting those stretches, we have stretches right now where we play really good basketball, followed up by stretches where we don't play really good basketball yet. Some of that is we don't understand what that takes. Some of it is we just have to be in those situations long enough. So for us, it's a matter of continuing to compete and to continue to be resilient and to continue to get better. All the way on your left side, Coach. Don, Andy Greeter with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. You've been a coach for you know two decades or so. <laughs> and, uh, okay, re- thanks. Shots taken. I like no, it. No, no, that's, that's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because you've been here regionally and, and you're familiar with, with the way the, the conference works. Who do you have an existing relationship as far as coaches go in the conference and who do you admire in the league? Well, that's a, that's a great question. There are a lot of great coaches. I've had a chance to be in the Big Ten in the past during my two-plus decades, evidently, of coaching. And so some of the coaches still remain the same and, and have done this great job. Uh, Lisa Bluter is a great example of that. And look at what she's done with her, her program. I think the Big Ten is as good as Big Ten women's basketball has ever been, with seven teams going to the NCAA tournament last year. You know, So I think there are a lot of coaches that I have a great deal of respect for, a lot of players. Lisa's probably the, the captain of it, has been around the longest. Joel McEwen, someone who's been doing this a long time and who has done it in a lot of different ways, has done a great job. You know, certainly some new coaches in the league, but also Brenda Freeze, you know, who's done it for quite a while and has really built and established a program at Maryland. Kevin McGuff, and I knew him back when he was at, his, at Xavier, so that was quite a while ago. You know, Kim barnes Rico has done a great job. So Terry Moran, we've been coached against each other back in our Division Two days. So there's a lot of coaches. Amy Williams and I obviously have a, a relationship with co- both coaching at South Dakota so quite a few coaches the ones that I missed are the newer coaches you know those young coaches they've only been doing it for like one decade or something something <laughs> along those lines hey Don Chantel Jennings with The Athletic just curious what you think Mara Braun's three-on-three experience did for her this summer and how that can help elevate the program this year Well, we talk a lot in our program about being highly competitive and learning what that looks like. And we use terms like find a way because there are times in a basketball game that you may have the best laid plans. Maybe it's the greatest play of all time and it's really set up well, but a pass gets deflected or a shot is missed and now you have to find a way to tip the ball in or come up with an offensive rebound. And in playing three-on-three basketball at that pace, you don't have a chance to stop competing. You have to continue through every part of that short shot clock to the next possession to the next possession. And really for us, learning how to how to have that short-term memory and move on to the next play is something that we spend a lot of time working on, but it's something that she had to do in three-on-three basketball. Yeah. 
Morning, Coach. Uh, the Gophers have, I believe, it's eight Minnesota players and then two from Wisconsin on their roster. Being a Wisconsin native yourself, how important is it to you to keep uh, the best players from these two states in the area? Right. Well, it's a reason why I think this this job is an incredible job, an incredible opportunity. I think there are great players in our area, direct area here in Minnesota, also within our region, whether that's Wisconsin, Iowa, you know, bordering states, South Dakota, potentially even, you know, looking into getting into Nebraska. So we have a lot of areas that are very close to us. But ultimately, having players from this area helps us in so many ways. It helps us because our young ladies, Marbron, can go compete and be over in China or go to Mongolia and come back home. And when she's home, she can actually be with her family. She can come home and have a weekend to kind of get things, get, get back into the rhythm and the routine and those type of things and be around her family. You don't have an opportunity to do that if you're playing at a school that's across the country from home. Our young ladies have a couple of days off. They can go spend some time with their families and they don't have to worry about getting in a plane and doing those type of things. Also helps us from a fan base standpoint. If you look at, and I say this I, not jokingly, seriously, here the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament was hosted here and was the best attended women's basketball tournament, I think, in the history of Big Ten Women's Basketball. If you look back, was it two years ago when Minnesota, Minneapolis hosted the Women's Final Four? It was a great, great experience. And so we have women's basketball fans here. Women's basketball fans love supporting local young ladies as well. So from a lot of ways, I think it really helps us uh, to recruit and continue to recruit from our direct, from our backyard and from our region. Our final question here. Hey, Coach. Good morning. Cindy Brunson, NBC Sports. What do you want your team to be known for? Yeah, good question. I think when you look at teams, sometimes you watch them play and, and you look and you try to figure out what their identity is. And so I, I go back a couple of years in my coaching career that's relatively young, some may say, and, and I remember a reporter asking a question, and the question was asked and answered by the reporter. The question was, what do you look for when you recruit young ladies? Are you looking for versatility and toughness? And I answered with yes. Those are two great qualities. And I think ultimately that's what we want to be known for. We want to be a team that is versatile in how we do things, you know, whether that's offensively or defensively, but a team that also plays with a great deal of toughness. Coach Plitzer-White, thank you so thank much you. for your time. Thank you.